Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us online. Let's stand and sing. I heard an old, old story how a Savior came from glory. Savior forever, it says. Amen. Praise him, praise him, Jesus, our blessed Redeemer. Praise him, praise him, Jesus, our blessed Redeemer. Sing a word. Excellent greatness, praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. Praise him, praise him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. For our sins he suffered and bled and died. He our rock, our hope of eternal salvation. Hail him, hail him, Jesus the crucified. Yeah. 
singing this morning and uh, it's revival sunday we're, ex we're excited to have brother chris miller with us so jared will you lead us in prayer this morning for our offering Let's stand and sing, Jesus, what a friend for sinners, Jesus, lover of my soul. Jesus, what a friend for sinners, Jesus, lover of my soul. Saving hell. 
and he is mine. He's saving, he's helping, he's keeping, he's loving. He is with me to the end. Amen. I'm so happy and here's the reason why. Jesus took my burdens all away. I'm so happy and here's the reason why. Jesus took my burdens all away. the days go by, Jesus took my burdens all away. Once my heart was heavy with the load of sin, Jesus took the load and gave me wonderful peace within my heart. And now I'm singing as the days go by, Jesus took my burdens all away. I'm so happy and here's the reason why, Jesus took my burdens all away. The days go by, Jesus took my burdens all away. Once my heart was heavy with the load of sin, Jesus took the load and gave me wonderful peace within my heart. And now I'm singing as the days go by, Jesus took my burdens all away. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. I was clothed in the rag 
mistakes of my sin, wretched and poor, lost and lonely within, but with wondrous compassion, the King of all kings, in pity and love, took me under his wing. Oh yes, oh yes, I'm a child of the King, his royal blood now flows in my veins, and I, who was wretched and poor, now can sing, praise God, praise God, I'm a child of the King. child of the king his royal blood now flows in my veins and i who was wretched and poor now can sing praise god praise god i'm a child of How many are glad you're in church today? Amen. Isn't that a great song? And I love that congregation we sang just a moment ago, our great Savior. It says, my pilot hears my cry. Aren't you glad God hears us when we pray and cry out to God? What a blessing it is to be here today. We're grateful for Chris Milner's family. His wife and kids are here today looking forward to this. Planned this two years ago. And uh, Chris was with us a few years ago and had a wonderful service. And some people got saved while he was preaching here. We're grateful for that. So we're glad that you're here today and looking forward to the message today. So would you please stand today in honor of God's man and the word of God today as Brother Chris comes and gives us the message that God's laid on his heart today. Brother Chris, welcome to our pulpit. Amen. Thank God you bless. so much. All right. Praise the Lord for being here. And let's look at Ephesians chapter 2. And then also another passage in 2 Corinthians. I am looking forward to the entire week. I'm very, very grateful for the opportunity. I'm going to set this down here. And uh, looking forward to the opportunity uh, for every service. And uh, uh, I did. I enjoyed that as well. That Our great Savior. What a tremendous hymn. And uh, just great. Just great. Uh, so tremendous. Well, we're, we're, um, we'll tell you more a little bit about the week and uh, about... Uh, uh, what the, we believe the Lord would have for us this week at, at the end here. Uh, but let's look to God's word at Ephesians chapter 2 and verses 8 and 9. The Bible says this, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now how are we saved? It says for by what? Grace. By grace. You're in 2 Corinthians. Just go to the left a couple of pages and you'll find 2 Corinthians chapter 12. It's probably just a few pages, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, just right before Galatians. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9, the Bible says this, And he said unto me, My what? Grace, Grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities. 
in reproaches and necessities and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. The title message this morning is The Place of Grace. Uh, the Place of Grace. Let's pray and ask the Lord to help us. Lord, I pray that you'd work in each and every heart here today. Lord, help us to come to you in our weakness and recognizing not only honestly our weakness, but your strength and your grace that is sufficient right now for everyone. Lord, if there's one here that needs to know Jesus Christ as Savior, help them to see that your grace is sufficient to save them. Lord, I pray that you'd be with uh, all of us as believers. Help us to simply come to this matter of faith in you to helping, helping us throughout of, uh, all the difficulties and challenges we have. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for standing. You may be seated. <clears throat> Uh, now, when I was here before, I mentioned that uh, we couldn't be able to park our vehicle here, our, our trailer. Uh, we live in a fifth wheel trailer, and we're parked at another church uh, about 10 minutes away or so. And uh, we have a very large trailer. We pull it with a semi-truck. And uh, so it's, it's a pretty big deal. It's a pretty big thing. And uh, as we do so, you know, we recognize that there's certain places you can park and certain places you can't. You know, size, getting in. But also, it's heavy. It's very heavy. And so we were going to a church in Georgia, and they said, well, <clears throat> we can't have you on our main parking lot, but we have an overflow parking lot. And I said, okay, well, that's no problem. He said, well, it's grass. I said, okay, that's a problem. <laughs> and uh, he said, no, 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 it shouldn't be a problem because it used to have houses there, and we tore those houses down, and, uh, you know, and we parked cars on there, and it should be fine for your trailer. He said, oh, oh by the way, and, you know, there's no septic tanks. This is on city sewer and everything, and uh, so it shouldn't be a problem. Famous last words. And uh, so, so here we are, and, and uh, I'm getting everything ready, and, and uh, we're looking at it and everything. I said, well, I, I'll, I'll give it a try. So you had to go up and over a curb to get onto the grass, and so the semi-truck tires, you know, front axle gets over the first, you know, the first axle gets over the curb, and we're fine, and we ease the second axle, the, the back axle of the trailer. It's just singled out, just one axle in the back. And there's dually truck tires back there, and they come up and over the curve, and, and now we're on the grass, and it's still fine. Now we're easing where the trailer, one, two, three, all axles are up and over the curve and onto the grass. And uh, I thought, well, I better get a plan to figure out where we're going to park this thing. I pull the air brakes, and, and I get out of the uh, truck. And I'm looking at different things. It takes about five minutes, and we think, okay, we'll park right here. We'll do this, and we'll get out this way and have a battle plan. And while I'm doing all of that, in that five-minute period of time, one of the tires had sunk down into the grass. Uh, but it only went down about two and a half, three inches. So I wasn't stuck, but I could recognize, okay, that's bad. All the other tires were fine. It was just that front left tire. And so I said, well, I think we ought to go back. So I back. Up, and I could tell where I backed up, it got more firm. I said, okay, well, let's park back here. He said, no, 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 you won't reach. The hoses, the cords, you know, you won't have any utilities. You, you just won't reach. He said, um, just go past that soft spot and get it in gear and just keep going and don't stop. Okay. So uh, I get it in gear. I release the clutch, and I'm going towards that. And I don't stop. The front left tire made it across the soft spot just fine. But when it got to the rear left tire, it sunk down all the way to the axle. So here's this huge semi-tuck tire. You can't pick one up. By, I mean, they're just massive. And, and it's like 20, 24 inches down all the way to the axle. And uh, I go, oh, wow, I've never been stuck like this before. The assistant pastor said, should we get the... Um, uh, the church bus to pull you out. <laughs> I said, no, no, that is definitely not going to work. And uh, so, so he said, well, how about this? Uh, how about we get a tow truck? Well, definitely we need a tow truck, but I'm, we don't need a little one. We need one of those big semi tow trucks. So it took us like 45 minutes. You know, you got what? Stuck where? <laughs> Just come, <laughs> you know? And uh, so, so they finally come and, and here comes a tow truck driver. It pulls up, you know, air brakes go off, door swings open. I mean, this is an 80,000-pound tow truck. And uh, out comes the tow truck driver. You know, tough, hoodie, ripped-up jeans, tough, ding, you know. And, uh, and as she <laughs> uh, 
walked up to me. She said, so you got yourself stuck. I said, yes, ma'am, I did. And uh, she said, okay, here's what we're going to do. And we'll leave the truck and trailer connected. I, I said, really? And she said, yeah, that's the best idea. And, and uh, we'll just... Uh, we'll just keep going. So the truck, if you think of it this way, the truck is going into a curve, and, and the, the trailer is going to follow in that curve. And, and if it does, then it would, it would miss this hole. And so she said, we'll hook up a winch. We'll get it to the front, put it in neutral, and just let, we'll just pull you. And eventually, you know, that tire down in that dirt is going to get up and onto solid ground, and then we'll get you out. I said, Okay. So she hooks it up, and it, things are cracking and popping, and, you know, we're moving, and we're going in that curve and just a little bit. And as we're going, we go a foot, but it's not finding anything. It's just digging through the dirt. And then we go two feet, and then it just keeps digging through the dirt. Three feet, four feet. I mean, dirt's piling up. We say, stop, 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 stop. And, uh, and uh, you know, it's bending things, all kinds of bad stuff. And uh, I said, I, what are we going to do? She said, we just have to keep going. All the other tires are on solid ground. We just got to keep going. So we dug out all that dirt that's piled up. I'm two semi-truck tires just digging a trench. So we go like f another f uh, foot, another foot, like six and a half, seven feet or so. And finally, the truck tire makes it up to solid ground. Now we're all in solid ground. And so if we keep going in that curve, then we'll miss that, that uh, ditch, that trench we just dug free of charge. Uh, for the church. Well, not really. <laughs> and, uh, and so, and uh, she said, okay. I said, well, hey, how about this? I know it's firm back there. Let's reconfigure this and back the trailer up and park back there. She said, no, 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 no. We need to keep going in this curb, curve. And, uh, and so what we'll do is I'll just have you just get in and put in gear, just drive, just keep going and don't stop. I said, I've heard that before. <laughs> And I said, well, you know better than I do. And so here we go. We go in the curve. And yes, the trailer did miss that trench. But it began to make a new one. And uh, so the left side of the trailer, not one, not two, but all three of those tires sunk down all the way down to the ground to that axle. And I'm like, I literally, I said out loud, no. <laughs> and uh, I thought, what in the world are we going to do? And then it really got bad when she said, we need to call a second truck. So this thing doesn't tip over. Where was I at that particular place? <laughs> I was at the place of grace. I was at the place of utter and complete weakness. There was no plan I could have. There was no that would work. There was nothing I could do. I didn't, find, I didn't say, that's it, fine. You guys and your plans have not worked. I'm going to do this by myself. I'm just going to get in there. I'm going to put it in gear, and I'm going to press the accelerator until I get myself out of this trench of this mess. Now, let me, get, let me ask, if I'm stuck like that and I just keep forcing it, is that going to make things better or worse? <laughs> Much worse. You see, the place of grace is where we acknowledge our total weakness in order to access God's sufficient grace. The place of grace where we acknowledge our total weakness in order to access God's, listen to this, sufficient grace. Would you recognize that God's grace is sufficient? It's enough for you today. Whatever you're going through, whatever difficulty, whatever challenge, and if you're here and you don't have your sins forgiven, God's grace is able to save you today and to help you uh, in your life. Let's look at the passage here. Let's notice uh, a few points about grace in this passage and then another one as well. Number one, let's recognize this about grace, four truths about grace. Grace is God's strength. Number one, grace is God's strength. You say, wait a minute. I thought grace meant unmerited favor. Well, it does. What is the unmerited part? We'll talk about that in a second. The favor part really is about God's grace doing for us what we can't. It's his strength. Now look in the passage and notice where it talks about grace in verse 9. And he said, 2 Corinthians 12, 9. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. And then it says, for my what? Strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities. Help me out. That the power of Christ may rest upon me. Then the last part of verse 10. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Okay, now watch. He's talking about grace, and then he leaves off that word grace, and he just starts talking about God's strength, power, and being strong. 
it's in context here where he's still talking about God's grace. And what it does is it does the work for us that we cannot. It is God's strength to do that work in which we cannot. For salvation and also for the Christian life. It is God's power and strength to do everything that we cannot. Uh, look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Notice in 1 Corinthians 15 and find verse 10, we see God's grace as a work and it laborers. It does this work. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 10, the Bible says this, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. Can you say amen to that? Amen. You wouldn't, if it wouldn't, was not for God's grace, you would not be here this morning. You say, well, Brother Miller, you don't know, you know, my life's not perfect. I'm not all that I need to be as a Christian. And th that's why we have this week. <laughs> okay. God wants to draw you back to himself. God wants you to have that close, intimate relationship. And if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior, the reason you're here today, it's not by accident. But so you can hear this message of grace that God can save you and rescue you from your sin. Look, it says, but, but by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace, which was bestowed upon me, or that is given to me, was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. He says, I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God. The grace of God did what? It labored. Um, it labored. Uh, the grace of God which was with me. So here's this grace that's with him. It's God's power. It's God's strength from the very person of God. And he does the strength that we cannot. Um, if we said, hey, we need to move this piano. If I just tried to move this piano all by myself, would I be able to make it? <laughs> no. If I said to several men, hey, I need uh, another four men or so. Hey, let's, uh, can you do me a favor and help me with this? And I'm laboring and I'm doing my part, but I can't do it on my own. But as I'm doing so, I'm lifting, and there's four other guys, then we could be able to get the piano moved in the proper way. You see, God's grace is his favor and his strength to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. It's, a, it's God's power. Imagine with me uh, on Thursday morning, I'm going to fly out uh, to New York City. And uh, what if I get on the plane and they say, hey, uh, we need uh, some help. Uh, could someone uh, please help the plane? We need a, someone to give us a push. You know what I would do? I'd say, I'm on the wrong plane. Okay, I'm going someplace else, and I'd be exiting that plane. Uh, but if they say, okay, well, you know what? I've been, you know, I worked out twice this last month, and so I'll, I'll be able to do something. And so I get back there, and I get behind the plane, and I push for all, well, all I'm worth, which is not much. <laughs> and, uh, and I push, and I strive, and I'm, I'm leaning into it, and I'm just sweating. I'm, I'm putting I'm several minutes. Am I going to budge that plane? No. Uh, am I going to get it fast enough to go down the runway and fast enough to, to, to get into flight or even to sustain flight? No, I can't do it. I'm totally weak. But that jet has jet engines, those turbines that have the power to be able to force that through the thrust to be able to get it on down the runway and up into the air and sustain flight. That Those engines are like God's powerful grace that's available for you right now. It can save anyone here. It can help you in your situation. Think of it today as God's powerful turbine engines of grace that's there. Are you accessing it? How do we access it? We're going to talk about that a little bit later, but let's notice this. Number one, that grace is God's strength. Number two, grace is only given. Grace is only given. It's bestowed in 1 Corinthians 15, 10. But let's look at, uh, if you would, at Ephesians chapter 2, 8 and 9 again. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Now, this is, this is a, an important truth to be able to see. Grace is only given. So, therefore, because of that, uh, it is supplied without any effort of my own. I don't earn it. Um, I do not work for it. So, it's without any effort. Uh, notice Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of your what? Of yourselves. Now, I'd encourage you this morning, as we look to God's word, to even follow along on, on your own. No, it's great. 
to be able to see something on the screen or perhaps or whatever, but look in the Bible for yourself and just see God's word and see how God can save you, his grace. And this says it's not of yourselves. It is freely given. So how do we receive this? Well, just like you would any gift. The, here's the gift of God. This eternal life is, is, uh, is, is a gift. It says it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Would you recognize that you need to be saved without any effort of your own because Jesus Christ finished the work? Okay, uh, there's a lady. She's a dear lady, 83 years old, and she was in central Pennsylvania. Uh, and she came to one of our revival services, and I asked at the end, how many here uh, know for sure that you're on your way to heaven? Several raised their hand. And how many here, you don't know for sure that you're on your way to heaven? And you'd like for me to pray for you. And she raised her hand, and I prayed for her. And I talked with her a little bit, at, you know, I, I think just greeted her, but she didn't, uh, you know, she had to go or whatever, and so she didn't make a decision that night. She didn't respond. Well, the second night, she came back with the lady that brought her. And uh, again, how many do not know for sure they're on the way there on the way to heaven she raised her hand i prayed for her but she didn't respond in the invitation she didn't talk with anybody she left again third night same thing here she is i'm said lord help her and uh, help her to understand and help her to respond and and uh, the third night she raised her hand again and finally i said miss rose after the service i said i see you raised your hand i prayed for you she said thank you i said but me praying for you does not um could uh, would it be possible for me to be able to uh, talk to you and another lady, talk to you and let you know how, from the Bible, you can know for sure you're on your way to heaven. She said, that'd be great. I said, okay. And so we went through, and uh, here she is. She's Catholic, and so she understands that the Bible is God's word, which is good, and she believes there is a God. Okay, that's good, but that doesn't save someone. Okay, someone has to personally place their faith in Jesus alone without any effort or works on their own. And so I start going through. I explain we're a sinner. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, fall short of God's perfection. She agreed with me. I talked about hell being the punishment for our sin. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life, that's not the Bible, it's another book that Jesus has in heaven. He says, uh, shall be cast in a lake of fire. And you know what? She agreed with me that there is a hell and sinners deserve to go there. Why then? I went to Jesus Christ, died on the cross. She said, I, I know that. And I said, he died for our sins. I know that too. I said, well, Miss Rose, what is it that someone needs to do in order to get to heaven? Well, you have to believe that Jesus did that and be a good person and do good deeds and do these things. Look, folks, if you say Jesus, I need to believe in Jesus and and put anything else after that conjunction and it's a split trust. No, this faith of Bible believing faith is faith alone in Jesus alone. It is exclusively recognizing Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the father, but by me. So I said, Mr. Rose, no, that, that's not right. I said, look at Ephesians 2, 8, 9. For by grace are you saved through faith and not, not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works. Works are any good deed you do and that you think is going to get you to heaven. And uh, she didn't see it. <clears throat> so I showed her Titus 3, 5. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done. But according to his mercy, he saved us. She didn't see it. <laughs> I think I, I either I showed her or I referenced Isaiah 64, 6. All our righteousnesses, all our good things we do, good works, are as filthy rags. So we think they're so clean and pure. Look, I went to church, and look, I did this nice thing. I helped this person. I gave money to the poor. But God says that they're filthy rags if you're trying to impress a holy, perfect, righteous God. And so I'm saying, Lord, would you help me get a verse and an illustration to help her understand? Then the Lord gave me Romans 4, 5. To him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. I said, notice, it's when you trust, it's through faith that God gives you righteousness in order to go to heaven. But I said, notice also, it says to him that worketh not, not to him that worketh a lot, or to him that worketh a little, but to him that worketh not. I said, it's fall time. I said, Miss Rose, if I come to your house and I have a rake and I start raking 
the, your leaves and, and, and your yard? She said, that'd be so nice. I said, that's not the point. <laughs> and, uh, and I rake the leaves and I clear off your front yard and I clear off your sidewalk and I clear off your drive. And then I take that rake and I set it down at the front of, outside your house. Would you come out of your house, grab that rake, and begin raking the leaves that aren't there? The yard that's already been cleared? And she said, well, no. She kind of giggled. I said, would you rake and clear the sidewalk? No. How about the driveway? No. I said, why not, Miss Rose? She said, because the work is already Oh, <laughs> you mean Jesus did everything when he died on the cross? Yes. So then all is left for me is to simply believe on him. Yes. So I don't have to be a good person. Also, it's just trusting Jesus. Right. So if I trust myself, that's good works. Right. I said, Miss Rose, are you ready to place your faith in Jesus alone? And she said, yes. And she trusted Christ. Let me ask this morning. Are you ready to place your faith in a Jesus alone, your faith alone in Jesus alone to save you? That's the only condition for salvation, receiving this gift. This grace is not given uh, to someone that earns it. It's given freely to someone who receives it by faith. You do not work for it. You do not earn it in any way. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 1, 9, who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Would you recognize God's grace is only given? Number one, grace is God's strength. Number two, grace is only given. Number three, grace is always sufficient. Would you mark that down? Grace is always sufficient. Second Corinthians chapter 12. Let's go back there. <clears throat> There's a very important word in verse 9 that we need to see. You have it? 2 Corinthians 12, 9. The Bible says this. My, and he said unto me, my grace. What's the next word? Grace. You say, wait a minute. I thought you were going to look at a very important word. Yes. We just did. Did you realize that grace is never future tense or past tense? Grace is present tense. He said, my grace is. Don't you love that? That means this. When he begin and finishes, and he says, my grace is sufficient. What does that mean? It's enough. It's all that I need. There is, no, there is no other source. There is nothing else that I need. There's no other supplement. There's no other additive. There's nothing else. It is enough by itself. This grace is sufficient, present tense, for what you're going through. What is it that you're going through? Hasn't the last... Boy, if, could you imagine two years ago, we ended the service, we said, hey, folks, hey, we'll see you in two years. Oh, by the way, in two years, uh, you know, we're going to have a pandemic and uh, a whole bunch of other stuff. And uh, uh, you're like, what? No way. And uh, you, we would have never have guessed. Maybe in the last two years, you've also had some personal stuff that's gone on. Your family, the relationships your job, some difficulties, just discouragement on your own or depression. You say, this stuff that's in my life that I need to deal with, yeah, there's some things throughout the last two years, this last year, but Brother Miller, there's stuff right now. You know what God says? My grace is. It's sufficient right now for, for what kind of things, what kind of stuff. Look at the, the passage in verse 10. It says, therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities. Th that's a sickness, a feebleness where, uh, and I just, well, I don't, I just kind of feel out of it today, you know. I might take some cold medicine. No, 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 no. It's I can't get up. I can't get out of bed. That's the idea of this. I, I'm just, it just is totally a feeble weakness in reproaches. Um, people are slandering, saying things about you, talking. It's not true. And here, you know, someone's backbiting or whatever. Insults is the idea. Necessities is this idea of uh, even such a, uh, you, you have a lack of what you need. 
but in such a way that there's a distress, there's, an, there, there's this uh, major problem. It's not like, oh, well, it, it's no big deal. No, I really need something. I, I don't have, perhaps physically or whatever, what I may need. Uh, and then it says in persecutions. Um, persecutions is exactly what it says. You know, there's persecutions. By the way, <laughs> I'm not a doom and gloom preacher. Like, things are going to get worse, and man, we can't have revival. No, we can have revival, folks, right now. There, there, there is nothing that's gone on that's like, oh, you know. We used to be able to have revival 50, 75, 100 years ago, you know, a lot easier than now. And oh, boy, it, look, folks, there is nothing that can hinder God from working in revival. I believe that with all my heart. But the truth is, a lot of times throughout even the book of Acts, God spread the gospel when there was persecution. Is, is it possible? Is it possible that we would face that in a reality more than someone laughing at you? More than someone giving you a hard time? More than someone just uh, challenging you in some way? Yes, it is. But the truth is, he says, uh, I have grace even in persecutions. Then it says in distresses. This, this is the idea of a narrow place. It's the same type of a, um, a thing, I believe, is when they would take that, that grape and they put it in the press and they press that in. And it's squeezing and then you get the juice. Or you could take that olive and you put it in the press. And here's this narrow place. It's like it's the, how we describe it. I'm between a rock and a hard place. It's very narrow. Anybody claustrophobic? <laughs> and you don't like these narrow places? And, but here it is now. It's not just claustrophobic, but it's pressing in. And everything around you is just so, so challenging. Now, what does he say with all of these things? So if I had two baskets, one basket here would be good things, um, God's blessings in finances, family relations, jobs doing great, nest egg is doing fantastic, no problems, house is doing good, there's no major Things are just clicking along in life. They have another basket. And it's, I lose my health. I lose my job. People are backbiting, insulting. I've got people coming after me just simply because I'm a Christian. And I've got all kinds of pressures all around me pressing in. Now watch this. What does he choose? Look at verse 9. He says, my grace is sufficient for thee. Then the last part, it says, for most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities. Why? So that the power of Christ may rest upon me. He said, if I had two choices, everything going well, or all these infirmities, and all these weaknesses, I choose this to be able to get God's grace. And here's a man who knew physical problems. Here's a man who knew uh, persecution. Here's a man who knew distress and difficulties and anguish in life. And he still chooses that because he recognizes the reality that God's grace is sufficient. What is it that you're going through? What is it that, uh, that um, you're facing? Would you recognize that God's grace is sufficient it is sufficient through all of our travels through all of our challenges and notice in second corinthians chapter 12 i'm sorry second corinthians chapter 9 uh, look at three chapters earlier i love this verse second corinthians chapter 9 the bible says this and god is able to make all grace <laughs> you knew that all grace abound towards you that ye always having all sufficiency and in all things uh, all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. You know what? There's times. There's um, there's one particular time I was in a temptation. I had this this emotion, this uh, wrong, evil thought. It was, oh, anybody would yield to this temptation. That's a lie from Satan. That is not true. You have victory available for every single temptation to be able to go out and find a way of escape. And but I had this. I said, oh Lord, give me more grace. You know what? In James 4, it says, anybody giveth more grace. <laughs> but then there's times when you say, Lord, I'm really going through it. 
And you know what's going on with my family. You know these people I'm burdened for, and I'm totally weak in helping them. And Lord, you know this is going on at work, and this is going on, and I have this discouragement, and all these pressures, and I'm on this fixed income, and all these things. You say, Lord, I need all of your grace. He says, I'm able to make all grace abound towards you, that ye always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Read that verse this afternoon. Look at it again and see that God's grace is sufficient. Imagine with me if we had a, uh, um, I, I, I had $1,000, I wanted to start a new checking account. So I go to a bank and I take my $1,000 cash, I put it in the bank and uh, do all the paperwork. She gives me the, the, um, the, the checking number and all these, thi these things and uh, I get my new checking account. Well, then now um, I need to use my check card. I need to write a check or whatever. And uh, so let's say I pay a bill for $200. And then we have uh, something else we choose to, to do for $50. So I spend $250. So mathematicians, one th this is, I know this is tough. This is church. We have to think. Uh, you know, 1,000 minus 250 is? Ooh, very good. Okay. And uh, so 750. I go to my account. I see those transactions and I see that they clear. But it says I still have $1,000. Okay, something must go on. You know, maybe it needs another day. And uh, so I, I look at it. It's another day. I still have $1,000, even though $200 went through, $50 went through. Finally, I go to the bank. I say, hey, I've got a problem with my account. Well, what, what is it, Mr. Miller? I said, this checking account. I spent $250, but it, it should have went through. But it shows now that I still have $1,000. What's wrong? Oh, let me look that up. Yeah. Oh, okay, I see it right here. Uh, you signed up for a sufficient checking account. A what? A sufficient checking account. No matter how much you, you spend for that day, up to $1,000, we'll give it back to your account. She says, is there a problem? I said, no, 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 no problem. Is there any more questions? No, no. And I ease my way back out of the bank before anything else changes. Man. Wouldn't that be incredible? Next day, spend, I just want to try this out, you know, I'm, I'm still not sure about it. I spend $300. And next day, I get $1,000 back in my account, that $300. Now, it doesn't accumulate. I don't have $1,300 now. I just have $1,000. Next day, I spend $500. <laughs> and next day, $500 back in my account. Balance is back to $1,000. Now, Wood, if you had $1,000 every day, for your rest of your life, would that be enough money to be able to pay your bills? If you don't say yes, then there's some issues. You need some counseling with pastor afterwards, okay? All right. <laughs> I can't help you. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that'd be enough. So that would be enough. That'd be sufficient. Okay, now what if I went through a whole week? Now, it doesn't accumulate. So at the end of the week, I don't have $7,000. But all week long, I go, oh. I totally forgot to spend $1,000 every day. <laughs> Probably wouldn't happen, right? You know, even if you didn't need it, you'd be like, hey, do you need something? And you're helping other people. Why? Why? Because, man, this is sufficient. This is uh, it's more than I need, and this is great. And uh, then you're buying this, and you're buying that. And Would you go through, how about the end of the week, you're like, oh, man, you're all worried, and you're stressed out. The pastor says, what's wrong? I've got this bill. Well, what, what, how much is it? It's ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand dollars. That's a lot. Hey, two weeks and you got more than that. <laughs> He's like, why don't you just pay it, little by little, with this right here? There's enough in this sufficient checking account. Now, if we had one of those, what would every one of you do? Be uh, where would you be uh, tomorrow morning? <laughs> you'd be at that same bank. <laughs> I'd say, ever you'd be a long line. <laughs> I'm excited enough for that. You know what? God's grace is sufficient. He has a spiritual checking account, but you've got to withdraw it. So let me ask, are you trying to carry the load? Are you trying to just grit through? Oh, it's so hard. Or are you just saying, Lord, I need your grace today. Your grace is sufficient right now. And I need to access it. I need to make a withdrawal. There's one particular time. I was going through a hard time. And 
there's a lot of, a lot of pressures, and we got away for a week, and where I'm taking some walks in the wood, I'm praying, pouring out my heart to the Lord, and I say, Lord, would you just meet my spiritual needs? And I heard no audible voice, but the Spirit of God, through His Word, very clearly directed my conscience and said, <laughs> I already have, but you're just not accessing it. See, folks, you have everything already that you need to live the Christian life. This week, we're going to be talking how to access it. That's why it's so important to come tonight. That's why it's so important to come Monday night to be able to let God's word sink in and see, Lord, if it's true that I have everything I need, then, Lord, I'm missing how to access it. Let's see a little bit how to right now. We see that grace is God's strength. Grace is only given. Grace is always sufficient. It's there. It's all that we need. But how do we access it? Number four, grace is accessed through faith. Look at Romans chapter uh, 5. Romans chapter 5. Grace is accessed through faith. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. In Romans chapter 5, the Bible says this. Therefore, being justified by what? Faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. So the truth is, the access point for grace, both to be saved and also as a Christian, is faith. This is a dependence, saying, Lord, I cannot save myself. I need to depend upon you for salvation. I trust you, and his grace does all of the saving. Will you today recognize, I need to be saved, and I'm going to place my faith in Jesus Christ. Like that lady who was religious, she tried to say, I've got to do something as well. No, no, no. You trust Jesus alone, and he does all of the work. Would you today be saved by trusting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? If you don't know for sure about that, don't leave this place. Do not go from here saying, oh, I'm okay. Would you recognize it is true? For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. The Bible says in John chapter 3 and verse 16, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. But he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Believing on the Lord Jesus is like believing on a chair. I could look at the chair and I say, you know, the chair can hold me up. The chair is sturdy. This chair is strong. And, and, and a pastor can say, go ahead and have a seat. And I say, oh, uh, you know, I don't know. He said, don't you believe that the chair can hold you up? And I could even say, oh, yes, I believe that the chair can hold me up. But I still stand. I walk around it. I tap it. I sing to the chair. I hug the chair. This is my chair. I love this chair. And uh, I have the chair. But you know what? I never sit on it. You see, that's just like some people, they believe about God, they believe about Jesus, but they're not depending on Jesus. When I depend upon the chair, I sit on it, I place my faith and my dependence on it. Now this becomes the object of my faith. I depend upon the chair and it holds me up. Just like that, would you recognize some in here perhaps are believing about Jesus, but you're not believing on him. Will you trust Jesus Christ and his grace to save you? But as a Christian, would you say, Dear God, help me to depend upon you on Monday morning when I'm going to work. And I've got this difficult challenge or this pressure or this person or this family member or this problem or this financial burden. And on Tuesday and on Wednesday, so many times we stress, we fret, we worry. And the whole time, our sufficient checking account is right there, and it's left untouched. The Lord said, <laughs> I've been offering you every day my sufficient grace, which is simply depend upon him. And no, no matter what's going on, what difficulty, you see now through the whole, help and the hope of the Holy Spirit, his love shed abroad in your hearts 
because you're accessing his grace through faith. Would you depend upon the Lord today and say, dear God, I need your grace. But in order to do so, the first starting point is just saying, dear God, I'm weak. I cannot. I can't press the accelerator and get my tires spinning, get me out of this rut. No, I would just make things worse. And that's exactly where many of you have been doing. You've been trying on your own. But you've got to hitch up to another source of power and allow them to tow you out. So that day, <laughs> we uh, called the second tow truck. During that, that time frame, um, the, you know, someone in the church said, hey, do you mind, uh, Brother Miller, while we're waiting for the second truck, we'll have him come and preach a youth rally? They asked the tow truck driver, do you mind? She says, I don't mind. I was like, do you want to ask me? I mind. <laughs> and and uh, so I went and I preached, and, and we had four people, young people saved. Came back out, had the truck and the trailer, and ended up, um, the second truck didn't help. But we ended up having to straighten up the truck, and we did that. She pulled it, and I thought it was going to tip over. Then we got it straight and hooked it on. And we started pulling the truck and the trailer out of this hole, and the trailer tires went 2 feet, 4 feet, 6 feet, 10 feet, 12 feet, 14 Finally, eventually, it pulled out. And when we parked, we were perfectly level front to back, side to side. If we went two, three more feet, we wouldn't hook up. We wouldn't have reached with the, with the cords. And we just plugged in that night, and there was some damage. But we thought it was going to be thousands of dollars, and it wasn't. The next morning, I preached, and the next afternoon, on that Saturday, to a men's stakeout. We had eight men trust Christ. Amen. On Sunday morning, it was friend day. We had four trust Jesus Christ as Savior and get counseled in the invitation. Throughout that week, my wife was praying, God, please save 20 people because we know there's something that you want to do this week. And we believe with the children that were saved later on in the week and such, there was over 20 that trusted Jesus Christ as Savior. When we look back at it, we see that the truck and the trailer was just simply an illustration of what he was doing in our hearts spiritually, recognizing we're weak. We cannot do this on our own. Lord, you take control. And when we do that, we're at the place of grace and we see God do something greater than we ever had imagined. Would you today trust the Lord and recognize your weakness before him. Let's pray and ask the Lord to help us. Father, I ask for your help. Would you give us your strength and your grace in a very obvious and clear way? Lord, there are ones here going through difficulties and problems and challenges. Lord, I pray you'd help them to cast their burdens upon you. And Lord, would you sustain them by your grace? Lord, I pray that you'd help each one here that needs to be saved and know for sure about it, that they would also depend upon you, Jesus Christ, to save them. With their heads bowed, with their eyes closed, let me ask just a couple of questions this morning. First of all, if you're here and you say, Brother Miller, there's one thing I know for sure. I'm saved. I've trusted Jesus Christ as Savior, and no doubts, I'm on my way to heaven. If you know that's true, can you raise your hand throughout the room? God bless you. Great. You can place your hands down. Now, look, if you couldn't raise your hand, thank you for being honest. You're not here by accident. God's grace is powerful enough to save you and help you right now. If you're here and you say, Preacher, I don't know if I died if I go to heaven. If you're not sure about that, right where you're seated, can you slip your hand up? Would you raise your hand right now? I don't know if I died if I go to heaven. Thank you so much, and thank you so much. God bless you. There were two that raised their hand. You can place your hand down. Thank you. I'll pray for you in a moment. Let me ask the same question again. If you raised your hand, you don't have to raise it again. But let me ask, if you're here and you've not trusted Christ or you don't know for sure that you're on your way to heaven, you didn't raise your hand before, but you say, that's true for me. I don't know for sure if I died, if I go to heaven. If you don't know for sure about that, can you raise your hand? Anyone, anyone else? Say, that's me also. Anyone else? Just right now. Say, Lord, I, I need to know for sure that I'm on my way to heaven. Anyone else? I'll pray for these two. Let me ask, dear Christian, God spoke into your heart. Would you say this morning, I just need to acknowledge, I need the Lord. I'm weak, and I need his grace every single day. And I haven't been accessing it like I ought to, but I want to. And I want to tell the Lord, I'm weak, and I'm going to access your grace. If that's you, as a Christian, can you raise your hand? Say, that's me. God bless you. So many. Praise the Lord. That's great. You can place your hands down. 
in just a second, we're going to stand. In fact, let me ask you, would you look this way? You can look right here. In just a second, we're going to stand, and I'm going to pray. After I pray, on the pianist play on that first note. If God spoke into your heart, would you step out and come? Don't stay where you are, but would you come? And especially if you don't know for sure that you're on your way to heaven today, don't go without knowing for sure about that. I'm going to ask you in just a moment. I'll pray for you, but that doesn't save you. I'm going to ask you to slip out from where you are, come to the front, and let someone talk to you. A guy with a guy, a lady with a lady, and we'll show you exactly verses so you know for sure that you're on your way to heaven. If you want to come with a family member or a friend or someone else, you can do that. Just would you come and let us help you with that. Everyone standing, let's bow for prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray for your help. Would you please give it? Lord, I pray you give grace for those that have already responded. And Lord, help each one here that needs to respond and let, raise their hand, help them to step out. Lord, I pray for those here that do not know for sure they're on their way to heaven. Help them right now, Lord, I pray, to get their, their doubts and the questions answered and settled and help them to know for sure and to be saved. Help them to respond, Lord, I pray. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed as the pianist plays, God.